So we have a positive injury update on United with Rashford, Sabitzer, Luke Shaw and Malassia back on the plane. No Bruno Fernandes, no Martinez, no Varane for the Sevilla game, which is annoying. But we've got to look at the positives. But some Manchester United fans are being particularly negative after Ten Hag's press conference. And they're completely outraged by some comments that Ten Hag has made. And again, I just think this is a complete overreaction by a small fragment of the fan base. A small fragment of the fan base that Ten Hag was saying that De Gea is a, a complete goalkeeper. And some people in the fan base became angry and losing their mind at this. And I'll talk about what Ten Hag said in a second. But look, David De Gea is a good goalkeeper. Yes, he's not perfect with his feet. Yes, he gives the ball away. Yes, he's not perfect in possession. And yes, he's not the modern keeper. And United might need to progress past De Gea. I get that. But is Ten Hag going to go out online and just slate De Gea when he's sitting right next to him? No! So I don't get why there's some Man United fans say we're never going to be a big team because De Gea is here. De Gea is not going to stop us from being a, big, a good team. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? But we'll get into that in just a second in the fan outrage because it annoyed me. We've also got some news on who Ten Hag does want to sell. And reportedly it's not De Gea, which has left some small fragment of the United fan base human. Look. I generally think that next season United need to get a new goalkeeper that's more than that's good with their feet. But this but this summer we've got a bigger picture than goalkeeper. We've got striker, we've got midfielder, we've got defensive reinforcements, four defenders to leave. We need to probably get two defensive reinforcements. Even a Casemiro understudy. De Gea is a good keeper, but he lacks in aspects of his game. He gives the ball away. He doesn't help with build up play. I get that. But I do think there's this big outrage on David De Gea and the fan base. It's a complete overreaction. So let's dive into the news. Let's dive into who Tenor wants to sell. Let's dive into what Ten Hag said on David Teja and let's dive into the positive injury news, who's travelling, who's likely to play versus Sevilla. So I want to first of all start by getting into Ten Hag's comments on David De Gea. So Ten Hag said on modern goalkeeping, but at the end of the day, it's about stopping goal shots, crosses, one-on-ones, and I think David De Gea is a complete goalkeeper. And this is what everyone is getting annoyed at. Ten Hag was asked about modern goalkeeping De Gea when he said at the end of the day, it's about this, this and that. And that I think there's a complete goal, you know, a complete goalkeeper. And people are losing their minds saying, like, Ten Hag is stupid. Ten Hag doesn't know ball if he thinks De Gea is this, this, and this, and this, and this. Ten Hag is a very clever man. Not only because he played McFred once and he hasn't played them again, which, no, but he's a generally clever man in the sense of he will go out there and he will praise Harry Maguire. He will go out there and he'll praise Scott McTominay. He'll probably say that their course is a good footballer. Now, obviously, I, De Gea is better than the three people I've listed. But what De Gea, Ten Hag's not going to do is knock the confidence of his goalkeeper, De Gea. Ten Hag, every press conference, every night player he's spoken about, is going to complete defend. He's going to be positive. He's going to talk positive about. So although people might not agree with what Ten Hag's saying, would you rather Ten Hag go, yeah, De Gea is not a modern goalkeeper. He needs to do this. He needs to come off his side. He needs to do this right in front of him and slate him and say that he's not good at this, this and this? Or would you rather Ten Hag big up his keeper, back his keeper and give him confidence? You know, Ten Hag, I'm sure, is critical behind the scenes. We'll speak to her, say, you need to improve on this. When we lose, he is critical. We know he's a critical manager. We've done so many videos where he's had a go at players. He's told players to work on this, this and this. He, If he if we goes and looks at a goalkeeper in the summer, you'll know the truth with that. But I think Ten Hag probably is thinking about replacing De Gea. I don't think De Gea is a Ten Hag keeper. But I think Ten Hag's probably got the same opinion as me as, well, I need a striker, I need a centre mid, and I need some defensive reinforcement before I even, even go to goalkeeper. We need some priorities before. You know, De Gea can stay for another season. You know, there are United fans that generally believe that we could bring in six players, but if we didn't show the goalkeeper, we'd never be a successful team again. I still think we're capable of winning the league with De Gea. But I do understand the need for a modern goalkeeper that's better, better with their feet to progress further. But I think, you know, these small portion of fans outraging at Ten Hag saying, you know, well, at the end of the day, he's good at shot stopping la la I think he's a complete goalkeeper. It, it's just silly. It's just silly how much hate De Gea gets from this fan base and how people lose their mind over him. Look, OK, he, you know, there, there is areas for improvement. But why are people turning? And it's only a small sense of people. But I've seen one of people turning on Ten Hag, expressing anger at Ten Hag because he's backing our player. Like, this is what I don't like about the fan base is, if you know, if they don't like a player, and certain people don't like a player, and Ten Hag backs him, they turn on Ten Hag. Mate, Ten Hag knows what he's doing. Ten Hag is a capable person, and I'm glad Ten Hag is backing our players. Ten Hag also said on David De Gea, this seat on form this season, he says, stopping goals, that is the main job for a goalkeeper. Everyone has their own particular style. Nowadays in possession, it has become more and more important at the top level. He does say, look, you know, he has his shot stopping style. Obviously, possession has become more and more important at top players. He's praising De Gea, being nice about De Gea, but he has noted, you know, his limitations. And he knows that. And I, I think there's actually people saying, oh, if Ten Hag doesn't sell, 
to hear that someone gives them a new contract, I think I'm 10 arg out. And I'm like, what? I mean, it's just very few people, but I'm just, I just wanted to do a little rant about that for five minutes as well. Anyway, who will 10 arg sell? Because there is issues with Terry's new contract. You never know. He could be sold. But we do know who Ten Hag would like to sell. And we know that there could be 13 players up for sale. But obviously, here is a list of defensive players that are very likely to leave. It was said Manchester United had provisionally planned for Maguire, Bailly, Tellers and Brandon Williams to be sold. I think Maguire will be sold. And I think if Maguire is sold, we will sign a centre-back. I think we'll look at Jurian Tim, but I think we'll look at Kim Min Jae. And I think we're looking at the Monaco guy, Alex Disassi. I think we'll be looking at those three players. I think maybe Ndika or another name might pop in about... I think Timber could be that one that's got a little bit of reliability in it because he tried to sign Timber last summer and I wouldn't be totally shot. Um, Tellers and Brandon Williams will go because we've got Manassia Shaw, we've got Delo, wan and he'll probably bring him Frimpong. It was said today by someone like us, the 10 old plan to bring him Frimpong and we do know from reliable journalists it's striker, centre mid, right back and then if a centre back leaves he's going to bring in a centre back. I think that Maguire will leave, he's not getting the game time he wants, I think it's time for him to leave United. 10 clearly doesn't rate him. You know, I think then the centre back will come in. I think that will be the plan. I think in midfielders, we're looking at Orkin Koku, we're looking at Alexis McAllister, we've been linked to Ryan Gravenberch, you know, Frankie De Jong to Bellingham. Um, I'm sure we'll look at midfielder and striker, we're looking at Kane. But as I've said with the transfer news, I think we know who Tenog wants to sell and buy, but we can't do anything until the takeover is sorted. And look, we will be getting some news on the takeover soon. Hopefully, it starts moving quickly. So do make sure you subscribe if you do want to stay up to date on all the Manchester United news regarding the takeover i did want to talk about a few players though that tenog has signed just to praise them ericsson has been fantastic this season bruno fernandez i know it's not tenog signing but he's completely adapted his game under tenog's been fantastic and casemiro has been fantastic you know you can say what you want about tenog you know for the people that are critical of him because he's praised hair which you think is mad but he's, within one game against brighton he got rid of mcfred and he's not played them since we play imagine we've gone from mcfred to Ericsson, Casemiro, Bruno. Ericsson, Casemiro and Bruno, who have all started together, not the game once they've all started together. And Ericsson and Bruno, that just absolutely went away to Nottingham Forest through the relegation battle and dominate that midfield, despite not having Martinez or Varane behind them, despite not having Rashford in attack. You know, they still dominated and took control of that game. You've got Casemiro bossing it. You know, we've got a good midfield. We've got a very lovely midfield. And, you know, Tenor has transformed that midfield. I think once Tenor gets that striker, and I'm so interested to see who transforms our attack. You know, how much better will Rashford and Anthony get when they've actually got a proper striker, not Vout Lanky Beckhorst in the middle or Bre Breadsticks Martial that's only on the pitch once every six months because he gets injured. You know, I'm really excited to see who we sign in the summer and the influence that they have because I think if Ten Hag's doing as much with the current squad we have, what's he going to do when he really gets what he wants? He still wants another midfielder, but our midfield's looking pretty solid. You know, he still wants more defensive reinforcement and attacking reinforcement, which is great. But the real positive, and this is regarding the Sevilla game, I want to get in the news ahead of the Sevilla game. Marcus Rashford is back in training. So is Marcel Sabitzer, Luke Shaw and Tamar Molassia, who are also taking part in training today. And it was said that breaking Marcus Rashford has travelled with the Manchester United squad to, to Seville. Same with Molassia, Sabitzer and Shaw. So those players are back. Those players are back in the squad for Seville. I don't know if they'll start, but Ten Hag said, you know, I'm not going to take someone on the plane who can't play, who's not ready to play. I do think that he might be rushing Rashford back. So I don't want to see him start and maybe subbed on if we need him. But we've got all those players on the plane for Seville, which is so important because obviously we are missing Martinez and Varane. So Lindelof and Maguire have got to be on it. I tell you that now. No injuries from them. Obviously Luke Shaw coming back. At least we've got another potential option at centre-back coming up as well, which will be important. The only real injury we have at the moment, and the only person that's actually missing from the Seville squad is Scott McTominay. It's said that McTominay is injured. Um, it's weird how, like, not that I'm saying we wanted McTominay to get, get injured, but remember two years ago when we played McFred every week and everyone was like, Donny, 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 Donny. I want to see Donny go. And McTominay was just always fit every game. It's like, now McTominay's not playing. This is like his third or fourth injury. It's mad. It's actually saying that Donny got... um injured because when Casemiro had all those suspensions and McTominay was injured that Donny would have got an opportunity in that deeper role and, and I do think that Donny personally thrives a lot better there in a deeper role but listen guys tomorrow's video I'm going to do the Manchester United versus Sevilla lineup once we get some insight on what that could potentially be and how we're going to potentially line up versus Sevilla and then obviously tomorrow will be a watch along for Manchester United versus Sevilla I'll probably be live is it is it a five o'clock kickoff or an eight o'clock kickoff why am I googling this now Manchester United don't tell me it's five o'clock kickoff it's an 8 o'clock kickoff, that's good. So I'll be, I'll be live about 7.45pm tomorrow and then there'll be a match reaction after that. So do subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching this video. Not really a news video, just me kind of chit-chatting about our players. Just something a bit different because I, I think just transfer news, takeover news videos every day like just gets a bit boring when nothing's actually happening because the takeovers were waiting, the transfers were waiting. Smash a like, see you next time. Bye.